and welcome to uh, today's uh, site supervisor panel presentation. We're pleased that you're able to be with us. We have a, a wonderful uh, group of site supervisors uh, willing to explain the opportunities they have uh, for you uh, as interns in the spring of 2014. On the screen, you'll see my picture, Dr. Pratt Franks. I'm the coordinator for the SLIS internship program. And on the right, you'll see Melissa LaFranchise, our student assistant who is responsible for putting this site supervisor panel program together. What we're doing this evening is recording this for use later on, as well as creating webcasts of the presentations so everyone is able to eventually come back and view them again or send somebody to the site to view them. Our first presenter is Wendy Townsend, and she is going to speak to you about the opportunities she has available in the spring. And right now I'm going to turn the mic over to Wendy. Thank you. Um, my name is Wendy, and I'm one of the librarians here at the Placentia Library District. We're located in Southern California in North Orange County, not too far from Cal State Fullerton. So this would be an on-site internship. You would need to be available to come to our location. The main thing about our library is we like to have fun in everything that we do. So whether it's the children's department, adult services, or technical services, we really like to have people around us who enjoy working in the library and enjoy working with patrons and having a good time. So as you can see, our Christmas picture from last year is not really a serious one. It's more of a funny one. And we have a little word cloud that you can see on our website as well um, based on some of the things that people have said about the library and the things that we offer. We actually have three internships at our library. Um, we're about a medium-sized library. We serve a population of about 50,000 people. That's the community size. It's mostly families and middle class, uh, middle class people that come to our library. There is a large Hispanic population as well as a large Asian population, so we do do a lot of bilingual services. The first internship I'll talk about briefly is our adult services and reference services internship. Uh, when you're working with the adult services part department, you will be working at the reference desk with library staff and then probably by yourself as well for a little bit of the time. And depending on your availability and um, when you would like to come in and do your internship and what you would like to work with, your internship might vary. We have a lot of programming here. We have a literacy program. We do a lot of adult programming like DIY workshops and art workshops to holiday series. So we do have a robust adult services programming department. Internships with the adult services will also work on pathfinders and collection development. So you would help the librarian select materials as well as weed materials from the collection. And if you're interested, you'd also be able to work in the adult services department. So again, we like to leave it a little bit loose so that you can enjoy and learn whatever it is you would like to do as well as um, be beneficial to the library as well. The second internship is our children's and YA services internship. It's very similar to the adult services. It's just that it's in the children's department. They do a lot of programming as well. Part of the duties would be to sit at the reference desk and work the children's reference desk, click, create pathfinders, and of course work on collection development. Again, depending on when your availability is will depend on which type of programs you'll be working with. Uh, our children's programming is in the mornings during the week, but there is teen programming at night and on the weekends. So there's something for everybody. And the last internship is our local history room. And I'm actually the local history room librarian, so you would be working directly with me. We'd be working together on adult services reference, so out in the main library, as well as local history reference questions. We have a lot of projects to do here in the history room. Um, we have a big project where we're going to have to go through all of our photos and, and determine copyright as well as age. There's digitizing of materials, processing of new materials, and of course, we do a lot of outreach as well, so going out to the community and promoting local history. So it's a really fun internship, um, creating displays. So if you're creative and are looking for something that's a little bit archival but doesn't necessarily need archival training, um, this could be for you. Okay. 
So student qualifications. We really want you to be interested in whatever you want to do here at the library. So if you're interested in adult services, that would be the place for you. If you like children and really want to work with children and young adults, young adults would be good for you. Or if you're interested in local history or just history in general, the, the history room might be a good place for you. Uh, we are looking for friendly, enthusiastic, and self-motivated people. So we'd like to give the SJSU interns a long leash. So we may give you a project and guide you through it, but it would really kind of be up to you to create it and, and to work yourself through it. You'd have to have good oral and written communication skills. There is a lot of writing, particularly um, in the adult services and the local history room. You'd need to know the Dewey Decimal System, hopefully everybody knows that by now, and be able to help us um, create documents using all the Microsoft applications. So that includes PowerPoint, Publisher, Excel, and Word. And of course, how to navigate the internet and how to use databases um, that the library has. See here, I think that that is pretty much it. I do want to mention that I was an intern at the Placentia Library just a few years ago, and they actually hired me about a year later to be the local history librarian. We have several, we have had several interns here. Some of them have gone on to other jobs in other public libraries. Some of them are still here with us volunteering. So um, if you're looking to stick around for a long time and, and volunteer your time later, this could be a good place for you. Thank you very, very much, Wendy. That was uh, very interesting and some wonderful opportunities for our students. We'll have an opportunity for question and answer in a little bit. But right now, I'll move on to our second presenter of the evening, Claire, who will speak to us about opportunities at the University of San Francisco. And Claire, would you like to take the mic? Thank you, Pat. Can everyone hear me okay? Get some smiley faces or, okay, looks like. Okay, great. Looks like a lot of yeses. Excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Claire Sharifi. I'm a reference librarian at the University of San Francisco, um, which you're seeing a picture of there in the slide, and that's actually the library right at the center of campus. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, like I said, I'm a reference librarian at the University of San Francisco. Uh, I've been employed at USF since 2011, and I'm a graduate. I'm a December of 2009 grad of San Jose State. So, um, And so a little bit about the University of San Francisco, not to be confused with UCSF or San Francisco State. The University of San Francisco is um, it's a Jesuit institution. We have about 10,000 students, about 6,000 undergrad and 4,000 graduate or doctoral students. We have five colleges, the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Nursing and Health Professions, School of Management, School of Education, and then we have a law school. The library serves four of the five colleges. Um, the, law has, the law school has its own library. So um, you get a nice variety of questions and students um, and faculty working at the library. Um, so the Gleason Library and Geshe Learning Center, um, it's, like I said, right in the center of campus. Um, let's go ahead and move on. And I'll tell you a little bit about the facilities to get started. The library has four floors and includes numerous computer labs, a dedicated electronic classroom for information literacy instruction, smart study rooms with wall-mounted LCD screens, an art gallery, and um, the atrium, which is what you're looking at in this slide. It's this beautiful glassed-in, glass-walled study area. Um, so it's, it's, the library is lovely. The facilities are really beautiful. So in our services is what you'd expect at an academic library. And my um, summary is going to be pretty reference-centric. Um, this is a reference and instruction internship, and like I said, I'm a reference librarian. We have a very heavily used reference desk. We answer reference questions in person, via IM, via text, over the phone, and via email. And we also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one or small group appointments. We also do a lot of instruction, mainly one-shots, about 150 per semester. Um, a little bit fewer during the summer, of course, because it's a shorter semester, but we usually do over 300 a year. 
everything from first semester freshmen to doctoral students working on their dissertations, um, lots of instruction. So with this internship, the internship specifically, the responsibilities and duties would include you'd be able to work at the reference desk. Um, you'll start out by shadowing a librarian, and then when everyone is comfortable, you'll start taking shifts by yourself with plenty of support and backup, of course. Um, and this is a great way to get experience providing reference through various channels. Um, so it's a really, it's a really good opportunity. And it, like I said, it's really busy. We have a really busy reference desk, so you won't be sitting there kind of twiddling your thumbs. There's a lot of, a lot of actual questions come in. Um, so, and so in addition to the reference desk, you can observe uh, research appointments or uh, work with librarians who are doing research appointments. Um, and then the library instruction session. So this is, I'd say this, the instruction is a primary component of this internship. First, you'd observe a wide variety of instruction sessions. We have so many scheduled per week that it's pretty easy to pick and choose ones that would work out with your schedule as an intern and um, kind of fit in with what you need to learn. Um, so it'll be really helpful to see lots of different teaching styles and to become familiar with all of our resources. And then eventually you'll co-teach or take sole responsibility for an instruction session based on your level of comfort and um, what you're interested in. And you'll definitely get lots and lots of support. So the other bit is special projects. Well, attending department meetings, of course. Um, I think that's a really good way to kind of get kind of a bird's eye view of exactly what happens um, in the reference department of an academic library. Or we have interesting and pretty focused department meetings. So. Um, special projects, if a librarian has a special project that needs to be worked on, if there's something you're really interested in, if you have a skill set which fits in with um, the, a need the library has, can definitely design a special project for you. And one thing we're trying out is having the interns provide a training to the library staff. So if there's something specific that you learn during library school that you think would be a big, that you think would be an asset for the library, um, we'd love to get a training in it. And that's also an excellent, um, that's excellent experience for you to be able to put on your resume that you've provided a training to library staff. Um, so that's kind of the, the last piece of the internship. So prospective interns, the kind of what we like to see is what's required is basically in someone who's interested in reference and instruction. And again, that instruction piece is big because it, it is a really instruction heavy um, uh, internship. Um, we want completion of or enrollment in Library 210 Reference and Instruction Services. And what would be good to have is a flexible schedule, of course, um, especially with observing classes. If you have a flexible schedule and can kind of come in at different times during the week, that would be really helpful. But we can definitely work around your schedule. Um, comfortable taking initiative. So if you are comfortable identifying and speaking up when you have something that you're interested in and you want to take responsibility for, of course, that will make the internship more valuable to you. And a real interest in information literacy um, would, of course, make this internship more valuable. Um, and I think if you're looking for kind of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship experience, this, this internship isn't really set up that way. You'd learn from a number of different librarians, which I think is really, really valuable. You definitely have a point person, which is myself, but you'll work really closely with the whole reference staff, which is really great. Okay, so if you're interested, um, email a cover letter and a resume to me, Claire Sharifi. Um, and if you have any questions, you see my, my email up on the up on the slide there. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to shoot me an email or give me a call. Um, and you, like I said, we'd, we'd love to, to have some, some San Jose State interns. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. That was quite interesting and what a wonderful opportunity for students who are interested in information literacy and instruction. Our next presenter now is Michelle. And uh, she's talking about work at In the Stacks. And I believe this is our uh, only virtual internship of the evening. 
Uh, Michelle is on the teleconference, so Michelle, uh, if uh, you would like to present, uh, we'll be glad to move the slides for you. And I'm going to turn the mic over to you now. Wonderful. Thank you, Pat. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So, yes, my startup is called In the Stack. It's a video book review program that I began as a part of my graduate degree. I went to the University of Pittsburgh and completed my Master's of Library and Information Science there. And as you mentioned, the internship is virtual, but we're located in San Francisco, so uh, Bay Area interns might have the opportunity to attend events with us and volunteer with in the stacks. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more more about that later. So I'd like to introduce InfoStax. Uh, it's the first video book program produced by librarians. Uh, we review books and interview authors to provide book recommendations. And we're expanding into a larger web portal that aggregates and rates video book content from libraries around the world to provide more reliable book recommendations. And on slide three, you can see uh, this is our recent event. We curated a reading of librarian authors, reading from their latest uh, books at Lit Quake Lit, Lit, Lit Crawl in San Francisco this past October 2013. So uh, I'll move on to slide four now. So yes, as I said, the intern duties are definitely virtual and. Uh, it would be uh, writing, marketing, and WordPress duties primarily. Uh, but depending on what the intern is interested in, there is some flexibility. So we, that's up for discussion. But uh, the intern duties might include writing book reviews and author interview questions, writing web and marketing copy, assisting in compiling lists of potential partners. And I just wanted to mention that uh, our VP of Marketing and Community is actually writing the community building plan right now. So the intern hopefully could assist in implementing the community building plan. And um, our VP comes from PlayStation. They built a huge community there. Uh, so it could be interesting. And um, also we'd be uh, implementing a lot of social media. So this internship would really focus a lot on, on new media, community building, and uh, publicity, uh, some outreach to partners. And you also would have a chance to work with a content management 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 system. <laughs> Sorry, uh, and we use WordPress. And also, you could have uh, the opportunity to assist with our charity projects and so. If the intern is in the Bay Area. Uh, one thing that we've been trying to do is to get into 826 Valencia. A few years ago, we donated about 40 books to their library, and there was talk about us going in and actually creating a uh, like a cataloging system for them. So that could be up for discussion. And the internship duties would include some research and also some editing some video clips. So as an, intern, as, as an in the stacks intern, you would have the opportunity to work on an exciting new digital library startup that's revolutionizing the publishing media and library fields. And during user testing this year at Stanford Venture Lab, we found that 50% of our bookseller and librarian partners said they'd be likely to add the in the stacks plugin module to their website. And that's our book recommendation generator. And the partners are looking forward to testing the beta version. So if you're interested in being involved in an early stage startup, this is an ideal role for you. Student qualifications include uh, good administrative and technical skills, including Google Drive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and some WordPress. Knowledge of available tools and platforms in the social media space. Enthusiasm, a great attitude, and communication skills and ability to work remotely and meet deadlines, and good research and internet skills. So uh, if you're interested, you can send a resume cover letter and three references to me at michelle at 
And also, for more information, you can visit our website in the stacks.tv to see more information and to get more uh, information about our products. And as I said uh, before, our team is um, I'm partnered with Kate Peterson, who is formerly at Sony PlayStation. Now he's an MBA candidate. He concentrates on community building, and we also are partnering with a programmer and math whiz named Emma Flock. She is currently our CTO. So yeah, I look forward to answering any questions you have and uh, hopefully getting your application. So thanks so much. Okay, this um, is our, next, our next presenter is Hillary Hardcastle from the University of California, uh, Hastings College of Law, and so I'm going to turn the mic over to you now, Hillary. In order to speak, just click on the talk button and uh, then go ahead with your presentation. If you need help moving the slides, let us know and we'll move to the next slide for you. Okay, so I think I'm in the talk mode. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I'm Hillary Hardcastle. I'm the Head of Reference Services at the UC Hastings Law Library. Uh, UC Hastings is the first law school in California. We're a little different than the other UCs in that we are a standalone law school, so we're not part of a larger campus. We have about a thousand JD students and a couple dozen foreign LLM students, and we've just started this new consortium with the UCSF Medical School. So we now offer a Master's of Studies in Law for Health and Science Professionals. So the Law Library, and you can see a picture of our circulation desk there, uh, it's located, uh, so the Law School is located in three buildings at Civic Center in San Francisco. Uh, we're a block from City Hall and a block from the Civic Center BART station, so we're easy to reach from the East Bay and the Peninsula. And the library itself is located on three floors of one of the campus buildings. And essentially our primary mission is to serve the research needs of UC Hastings law students and faculty. And although we're closed to the general public, we are open to attorneys, and a number of attorneys visit the library daily to do their legal research. Um, but they're generally pretty self-sufficient. So the library itself has about uh, 650,000 print volumes, but we also subscribe to a number of online databases, um, most of which relate to legal research, but we do have a few interdis interdisciplinary databases, uh, such as ProQuest and various um, psychology journal databases. Uh, our students and faculty tend to use the online resources. Uh, many of our books are just gathering dust at this point. Um, and then as to the library staff, we have 11 professional librarians and five paraprofessionals. Uh, our public services department, which is looking for interns, would include me, two reference librarians, a foreign comparative and international law librarian, and a faculty services librarian. And all of us typically spend two to three hours a day staffing the reference desk. So we would love to have one or two SJSU interns who are interested in law librarianship join our public services department. When I was an MLIS student at San Jose State, I did three internships at academic law libraries and found them to be one of the most informative and rewarding aspects of my library school experience. And one of them led to this job, so that was a bonus. Um, so our hope is that the internship would introduce students 
to the day-to-day -day working life of academic law librarians. Um, so that would involve sitting at the reference desk part of the day along with one of our reference librarians where they would answer questions from law students, attorneys, and faculty. Uh, we get most of our questions from law students. Um, our JD students are required to write a research paper to graduate, so they'll often come to us for help getting started. And then a strange aspect of legal academia is that the law journals in which professor, professors publish their research are edited by law students. So as part of that editorial process, students have to gather and check all of the sources footnoted in those journal articles. So we tend to get a lot of questions about where to find some of those most, those more obscure sources. Our professors don't drop by the reference desk that often, but we have a librarian liaison program, so each librarian is hooked up with a specific professors, and we work closely with them on in-depth research projects, and interns would help out with those. Um, and not all of those are law-related. Uh, for example, one of our professors is writing a book on John Marshall and needed to know what the weather was like in Paris on specific dates in 1797. And it's been very, very hard for our librarian who's working on that project to find, find that information. He's been going through a lot of obscure French journals trying to find uh, information about the weather. Uh, and a number of our professors also do interdisciplinary research, so we'll often find ourselves doing health research or social science research. And then a huge component of our jobs is teaching and instruction, which we do face-to-face -face in classes as well as through our website. And on our website, which we designed ourselves and manage ourselves, um, we have research guides that educate students on how to do legal research in a specific area. So, for example, if a student is researching American Indian law, they could check out our American Indian Law Research Guide to learn what resources are available to them. Um, and we would love for interns to help us update and create those guides. And then our website also has video tutorials that show students how to use our online databases as well as free web resources. And we would love to have interns work on those as well. And then sometime next year, uh, we're going to lose our sixth floor, uh, which seems to be happening to a lot of libraries. We're losing it to office space um, as our faculty grows. So we'll be undergoing a huge collection assessment project in the spring and summer to determine what we should keep, what we should move to remote storage, what we should toss. Um, so our interns would assist us with this project by evaluating parts of our print collection and determining how much they get used, whether they're available in electronic format, and the advantages and disadvantages of print versus electronic. So, in terms of the ideal qualifications we're looking for in an intern, we would hope to find someone with some background in the study or practice of law who has some legal research experience. So someone with a JD or someone who has worked in a law library or in a law office as a legal secretary or paralegal. But that's not absolutely necessary. We would also consider candidates who simply have a strong interest in law librarianship with no prior experience. We do want someone with excellent communication skills, so someone who can communicate easily with people face-to-face -face at the reference desk, or who can write a good research guide or a video tutorial script. And ideally, we would want someone who is somewhat tech savvy. Uh, for example, we use Camtasia to create our video tutorials. So you wouldn't need to be familiar with Camtasia when you start your internship but you would need to be able to learn how to use it with relative ease. So, if all of that sounds interesting to you, 
um, please send me a short letter of interest and your resume at hardcast at uchastings.edu. Uh, we are very flexible as to the number of days and hours an intern would work. Most of this reference staff is we all sort of work normal business hours from 9 to 5, but we do have a reference librarian who works until 8.30 uh, in the evenings, and then we have reference on Saturday and Sunday. So if it would work for you to work some hours in evenings and weekends, we could work that out. Um, so you can email your letter and resume to me, and also feel free to email me if you have any questions. And good luck with school. Thank you. I was pleased to hear so many uh, Swiss grabs uh, presenting today. Uh, right now, I'm going to move to a slide that has uh, all of your images. Well, Hillary's image is <laughs> a the substitute there. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions so you can see where everyone's from and um, ask them your questions. And if you would put your mic off uh, while you're not speaking, that would uh, help us avoid an echo in the background. Uh, and if you have a question, you see the hand icon, just click on that and raise your hand. Well, I uh, have one while uh, we're waiting, uh, in case someone's thinking. Um, I was wondering, uh, because our students must register for a certain number of hours, and uh, they are required to put in those hours regardless of uh, whether or not there's a lot of work uh, to be done at the site at certain times, uh, I was wondering if you had any type of long-term research project or backup plan or if you are quite confident that you would be able to uh, give a student um, a worthwhile work for the uh, probably uh, 135 hours during the semester. Do you have any backup uh, assignments that you usually keep there for students like that? Um, I, I can speak for the Placentia Public Library. We are always busy, so we really don't have any time where the interns are not busy, and when if they find that they're not busy, we will quickly find them something to do. Uh, there's always program prep to do or to evaluate our programs. We've always got little backup projects if something goes wrong. That's excellent. That's good to hear. Uh, anyone else have something like that in mind, or you're all very busy as well? Um, this is Claire Sharifi from USF. We are also pretty busy, but if there is downtime, students usually, if they're once they get to the point where they're co-teaching or doing the instruction sessions themselves, they um, can use downtime to prep for their instruction sessions prep for the training that they're doing, and, and um, special projects do, do definitely pop up, um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, does anyone have a, a question for any of our presenters? That means you did a wonderful job of covering everything. So what I'm going to do now is just thank you very much for presenting. Uh, we will be um, making a recording of this available to all students. And we will also have a webcast available on our website uh, in a week or so so that additional students can view it that way. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions or comments for uh, me, uh, I'd like to hear them. Well, and if not, then I'll say good night and thank you.